What's going on everybody and welcome to GNR Central and we got a bunch of news for you guys today. So let's start with the interview that Duff gave earlier this week on the Rich Eisen show. Now Duff of course is a big sports fanatic. He talks a lot about his football pool. He's got other guys he's got in his pool including Jerry Cantrell from Allison Chains. So when they refer to Jerry in this upcoming interview they refer to it's referring to Jerry Cantrell of Allison Chains. So he talked a bit about the flyer wars that happened back in like the mid 80s like around 85 when Guns N' Roses was coming up and how nobody wanted to mess with the band. He of course also was asked about Guns N' Roses future plans including a possible new record and talked about the overall vibe on the Not In This Lifetime tour and then there was also some friendly betting so if uh, I guess uh, Rich Eisen and Duff meet in the finals of their football pool and Rich Eisen wins he bet Duff that he has to come on his show and sing the Disney song Frozen acoustically on his show and Duff apparently agreed to do that so here's the clip so before we get to your uh, upcoming project yeah. um, Slash says there's a talk of an upcoming album from Guns N' Roses you've confirmed it do you got any update on that um I do I have an update on it no, I, I just uh, I, I will say things are very positive in in uh, in that world and I understand why like I did say something about it in an interview people are super interested interested in that mm -hmm. and i understand why um i i do like the mystique factor of, of okay. the band and I, I shall keep it there but things are positive things are positive yeah. is there very, any very. is there any uh details you can give on why they are so positive just saying they're positive is, is a good detail okay. i think i things are great you know we had a, a, a wonderful amazing two and a half year tour we just did and it ended on such a high note and it was overwhelming how many people came to see those shows we played 159 shows wow you know after the troubadour we played the troubadour april 1st 2016 mm -hmm. was it um and axel broke his foot that for like third song in and i thought well you know we got this we got this one show under but we we we, we did this thing and and he wanted to continue on He's like, this isn't going to stop me. We played a bunch of shows with him in a cast, in a chair. And we just went through so many kind of revelations of, of things and uh, and ended that on a high note. And that's where we're still at. And then now we've got Tenderness coming out on where I dressed up as... Uh, I remember this. Okay, of... of Steel Panther. Uh, Steel Panther. Steel Panther. Yeah. Yeah. He, there it is up on the screen. Good Amazing. Lord. Amazing. You look what do you great. think, by the way? What do you think, Duff? I mean, it's you, you owned it. Think? That's the thing. You got to yeah. own something like Marshall that. Marshall Falk was there shaking his head. That's right, Marshall. Amazing. Was that day. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I mean. So, uh, you know, and I walked around. I walked around here. I went to the, I went to the, uh, it was the a, uh, cafeteria. Glorious Amazing. day. Yeah, no, no. I, 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 in yes, the finals. If, if we play each other in the finals. You got yeah. this, Duff. That we beat you, you would have to come on the Rich Eisen show and sing "Let It Go" from Frozen. So you, so I, if I make it to the finals, that that's just that's amazing in itself. Great Which accomplishment I will next for your year. Team. Okay, yeah, no. and I, you and Jerry, I'll, the cop from the uh, from uh, the Jerry, Los Angeles. Angels. I hope you're watching right now. Yeah. Uh, now, it's, Duff, of course, has been giving other interviews, too. His other one that probably made a lot of headlines was his interview with Forbes magazine. He talked a bit about Guns N' Roses. So the interviewer said, I spoke with Slash a few months ago, and he said for him just sitting down and talking with Axel and clearing the air was the best part of the tour. So I'm sure it was a pleasure just being around the vibe where everybody was such in such a good place. And he said, it's calm. But when it hits the stage, it's the odd thing of what we started with. Or it's the old thing of what we started with, which is we don't F around, and we don't F around when we play live. It's real, it's dangerous, it's sweaty, and all of those things. And we're trying to be the best band that we can, and that's what we always tried to be. Back in the day, we used to rehearse twice a day. We were trying to be the best. I think for ourselves first, I don't know if people would understand our music back then. The interviewer followed up by saying, once you write it down there, there's no denying the truth, so I'm sure it took a minute to accept this for yourself referring to you know looking back at the perspective of Guns N' Roses when it was at the height of its fame back in the late 80s early 90s and McKagan said there was some place I was many years ago and somebody played Guns N' Roses and I heard it with fresh ears I hadn't played the songs in a while so it must have been late 90s and it finally hit me this record is amazing and it took me a while to be apart from that record and playing those songs to finally kind of get it we were just in it for so long from 85 to 94 just in it immersed in this thing that grew beneath us and that grew quite huge 
I didn't have the means to really know how to handle it. And there's no, there's basically no how to handle manual for when your band blows up. And in my case, I took a lot of blame when I started writing about it for my first book, It's So Easy. I would write 4,000 words and be like, dude, that's the story you've been telling yourself for 20 years and that's not the truth. How shameful is that? You're lying to you and your computer and my daughter is sitting next to me and you can't lie to your computer and yourself. So he said, that's the damn truth. And some other rock guys have come to me and when, you know, they wanted to write books and they have, and they've come to me to get tips on how to go about writing a book. And I say, be careful, make sure you really want to do this because there's going to be self-discovery in there. And if you write an honest book, you're going to take hits for the stuff you have to take a hit for. And it's going to be from you to you. And there were some harsh realities in there, but I couldn't lie. I had to be truthful. He also revealed the hardest thing to admit to himself when writing his first book. He said, I think I could have been a better bandmate. And I kind of went on about once I discovered how effed up I was out of my head. There were plenty of people in my life that wanted to help me. And I thought I was beyond help. But I didn't stop and arrest that. And obviously, ultimately, my body stopped me. But with time and perspective, I could be—I could have been more super helpful in a lot of situations. So once I started pointing, once I started pointing fingers out and kind of taking assessment of my life, there's plenty on my side I could have kept clean, and that was a great experience. He was also asked about Axel being a little politically outspoken as of late. And Duff said, even if from even if from Paradise City, if you look at the lyrics, it's inclusive. Like Captain America's got a broken heart. That's when the recession was going on. It's the same bullshit in politics it's always been. We think we got the right leader. Think back to when you were a kid. It's still the effing man. I'm not, I'm not pointing to the current thing. I read too much history to be current. And right now it's the worst it's ever been. It is what it is right now. And I think as a nation, we are much smarter than this. And I don't see the divide. I go out and talk to people. On this tour, I talk to people. I purposely take side trips to talk to people and there's a lot of the media. I have a song called Chip Away and it has a lyric in there, talking heads and making dollars. Go out and talk to people. And the America I know is one after 9-11, we came together and united. Nobody asked who you voted for. And if same for the hurricane in Houston, the flooding in New Orleans. People came to help and nobody asked who you voted for. The country came together and that's the America I know and that's the America I identify with as the one I grew up with. Now, one of my first memories is marching with my mom. I was in kindergarten with the Catholic ladies when Martin Luther King Jr. got shot. We wore black armbands and marched downtown. And two of my brothers were in Vietnam at the time, and I had a lot of questions. I've been asking questions for a long time, but I've been exposed to a lot of things as a young man. Our family is mixed. My oldest sister married a black man in 1962, which was way out there back then. I didn't know it. I'm an uncle. My two oldest nephews and nieces are mixed, and we all played together. It didn't really make a difference, and we didn't know. Now, of course, not everybody grew up like that. And when you have a learned behavior later on, but you're not born into it, I think we're capable of so much more. Turn off the TV, turn off the internet, just go out, and I bet you your life will get better really quick. I think the songs that I wrote for my upcoming record, Tenderness, there's a lot of who we are in those songs, and I don't think, uh, and I don't need to be another guy out there pointing fingers. The record's not that, and it's hopefully meant to be a healing record. If you guys want to read the whole interview with Forbes, I've put the link down below for you guys to go check out. Now, this is a story that happened pretty recently. There was a nine-year-old kid who appeared on Ellen DeGeneres' talk show a couple weeks ago, and he played Sweet Child of Mine. And he's a kid who's only been playing guitar for like, like one or two years, and he's an amazing guitar player. And he came out and did his, he sort of did his own take on the Sweet Child of Mine solo, and it was pretty awesome. So if you guys want to check it out, I've put the link down below. So we turn now to some Brent Fitz news of Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. So he gave an interview uh, back in early March and while the band was in Berlin, Germany, and he talked about how the fans of rock and roll music seem to have changing tastes. So he first talked about playing in front of European audiences. He said, we love Europe. We love everywhere out over here. And it seems like the love of rock music has never waned. But sometimes in the United States, we question if fans have gone to some other genres, a little bit like country or pop music. But every time we play over in Europe, we're always pleasantly happy. We have a new record. We play a lot of new songs. And people know all the lyrics and still buy records in that, especially in this part of the world. So Germany has been awesome. It's been great. He also talked about the band's latest record, Living the Dream, and the title behind it. He said it's a cliche term right it was funny when slash came up with the title for that i think it was more of a tongue-in-cheek comment on what was going on when we made the record in los angeles where we recorded it we spent a lot of time watching cnn and it might have been poisoning our brains we were in between recording songs watching cnn going what's going on it was kind of like a way of saying living the dream at least we're living the dream of playing music with all the outside other stuff going on you know what it's actually a blessing to play music and it's a blessing to be over here in europe on tour We've been on tour for about two and a half months, and it's a pretty good lifestyle. I will say, to get to see the world and play with people I really enjoy playing with. And I've been playing with Slash and the guys for almost 10 years now. 
And to have a band that everyone gets along and we enjoy the lifestyle is fantastic. And that sounds like living the dream. So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And go check us out at gnrcentral.com for the latest Guns N' Roses news sticker.